Meet little Liliana, pretty as a picture. Just hours old, she's the sixth child for Andrew and Olivia Densley. She's perfect, isn't she? Mm -hmm. Liliana's loved dearly by her parents, but she was created, engineered in a lab for one reason and one reason only. To save her brother's life. At just four years of age, Fletcher Densley has a fatal blood disorder. A bone marrow transplant is his only hope, and one day soon, Liliana will be his donor. Would you have had a sixth child if it wasn't for this need? No. <laughs> no, probably not. No. no. Um, all I can do is reassure the child that we love it, we always will, and whatever the outcome, there will be no regret in having this baby. Ready? Yeah. OK. The Densleys might just be the most complicated family in Australia. Remarkably, their decision to genetically manufacture their sixth child, Liliana, is not the hardest one they've had to make. His turn. Ready, go. A bigger dilemma is whether they ever should have had their fifth child, Fletcher. Back then, they knew they may have been playing Russian roulette with his life in their quest for a bigger family. You certainly think about, you know, why why didn't we just stop at, at, at four, at four kids? Olivia's a bit more sensitive to what other people think and, and say, I don't really care what, <laughs> what you think and what you say, you know, I'm, I'll just live my life and you live yours. So it's to the haters you say, mind your own business? Pretty much, yeah, yeah. And, um, we've made the choices we've made. The smiles in the Densley family hide a silent and rare killer that runs deep within their bloodline a genetic disorder known as Wiscott-Aldrich syndrome. Wiscott-Aldrich syndrome is a death sentence. It is. That's probably the hardest thing to um, really get your head around at the start is that your child's been diagnosed with something that is potentially fatal. And when you're a parent and the mortality of your child comes into question, it just... it's huge. Olivia and Andrew's first two children, Ayla and Tate, were fine, but in 2010, their third child, Cooper, was born with Wiscott. He suffered its horrific effects for years. The family was told if a bone marrow donor wasn't found quickly, his days were numbered. But as luck would have it, their fourth child, Jackson, was an exact genetic match and could provide that life-saving transplant. You know, a two-year-old that has no say in this, putting him through, you know, a painful procedure, getting bone marrow pulled out of his hip. Did you feel bad? Yeah, we felt bad, yeah. Right from the start, we both decided that we trust modern medicine and that we had full faith in um, Cooper's doctors. They said the bone marrow takes three weeks to regrow and once that's happened, that's it. Sure, Jackson has to go through something, but it's not long term and it is only once and it's going to save his brother's life. It's been a slow process managing Cooper's health, but since the transplant in 2014, he's effectively been cured of Wiscott Aldrich syndrome. But here's where the story takes an extraordinary turn. Given the traumatic ordeal and question marks over genetic issues in their bloodline, it would be unfathomable for most parents to consider taking the chance to have another child. Nevertheless, Olivia and Andrew began talking about baby number five. If you have a boy as a carrier of, of Wiscott Aldridge, you're a 50% chance of passing the syndrome on to them. Yes, as a carrier and I have a boy baby, 50% chance that they will get it. So at this point in time, you've been to hell and back. This whole procedure, sorting out the syndrome for your boy. You've got a family of four kids. That's a handful. Did you think, all right, we'll draw the line in the sand there? <laughs> I definitely did. <laughs> <laughs> I still had the desire that I wanted to have more kids, um, but we hadn't 
Was this even after you'd yes. seen what Cooper had been through? Yes, yeah. And I just felt like surely we wouldn't be that unlucky to get it again. I just had hope. One in, one in two, though. I mean, that's not a matter of luck. That's <laughs> a, it's a pretty fair chance. Yeah, I know. I know, but you sort of think, how much is one family going to get dished out? So we've already been dealt a really rough blow and I just had hope that it wouldn't happen again. In the end, Andrew and Olivia say the decision was taken out of their hands, falling pregnant with an unplanned fifth child. Once I, we found out that I was pregnant, there was a little bit of, oh, you know, for just a second, what if it's a boy and what if it has Wiscott? We just kind of weighed it up. It was offered to us um, termination, but that's not an option for me. You're purely opposed to that? I'm not purely opposed to it. I just, I mean, for me, once you've had a child, um, you know what you get at the end and it's so wonderful. And the thought of um, having to terminate something that you know what's going to come out is a wonderful little baby is a bit unbearable for me. The whole process you'd already been through though with Cooper, I mean, you, you couldn't describe that as wonderful, could you? No, no, definitely not. That's not wonderful, but... But that, that's what you knew was potentially coming. I guess. I think we just turned a blind eye and hoped for the best. What did your friends say when you told them, after everything that had already happened, you're having child number five? Um, there were a few people who were like, why are you doing this? Why would you do that? Why would you do that to the baby? Um, and why would you do it to your family? Um, which at first was hard to hear um, because they were people who knew us and we thought, why would, why would you say that to us? It's, it's our life and we'll, we'll deal with it. I guess they'd say, though, it's not just your life, though. It's, it's little baby number five's life. Yeah, but we were always um, knew that he, he, was, he was coming into a loving home and he was, um, you know, that was gonna, we were going to do everything we could to, um, to help him. Did you see where they were coming from? I do now. <laughs> you didn't then? No. No, um, because we're just really optimistic, positive people who thought, surely this won't happen again. Well, it did. <laughs> On the 19th of May 2014, little Fletcher Densley came into the world. Tragically, three weeks later, he was diagnosed with Wiscott Aldrich syndrome. They'd rolled the dice and lost. I guess it was heartbreaking. It was, I felt, I felt for Fletcher, like he's going to go through what he, we know what he's going to go through. And I guess I did have a little bit of guilt of, we did this to him. It was a bit of a reality of, what did we do? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, at the same time, um, He's a beautiful little baby. So that kind of gets us through because we love children. This time the odds were well and truly against them. <laughs> no match was found between Fletcher and his siblings. So he was put on an international register to find a random bone marrow donor. As his condition continued to worsen, still no match could be found. And it was effectively a, a race against time, wasn't it? Because time's not on your side with Wiscott Aldridge syndrome. It was taken out of our hands at that point and um, it felt really, what, what more can I do? It was a waiting game and it was really hard just sitting back knowing of this impending sickness that is coming to our child and that was really hard to take. Still to come. The torment of waiting. Maybe we won't have him forever. And as time runs out, this would have been excruciating. The consequences of failure for them was the loss of their child. The race to engineer a solution. We did it. We finally did it. Is still no guarantee. Is it 100% that the baby will save Fletcher? Hello. 
Five kids are already a handful for the Densley family. But today it's the baby shower for their impending sixth child. <laughs> this celebration would normally mark the final countdown to birth. But for Mum Olivia, once the baby comes, yet another countdown begins. The new baby will one day save the life of big brother Fletcher, who is terminally ill. Olivia and husband Andrew couldn't find a bone marrow donor for him, so they purposely made one. We didn't know anything about IVF. In fact, the only thing I knew was that it could take a long time. And what was the success rate? They said you had um, an 18% chance yep. of this working. And as time went on, that lessened and lessened because mm -hmm. Olivia was um, getting older, um, producing less eggs. So the percentage was really, really starting to, to drop off. In IVF terms, I'm considered a geriatric mother, <laughs> which is old been pregnant before, so you don't have any children at this stage. Dr Gareth Weston was the man entrusted with creating this miracle for the family. It was no easy feat. The embryo had to be without the Wiscott Aldrich gene that runs deep within the Densley family blood, and it also had to be an exact genetic match for Fletcher. They were completely across the, the hurdles that they were facing, and I felt at all times that they understood um, that things were stacked against them. This couple have had four years or more of hard work to get where they are now. It's not just hard work, it, this would have been excruciating. It would have been absolutely agonising because the, the um, consequences of failure for them was the loss of their child. And what's this one? That's green. That's green. We just reached a point where we went, what if this doesn't work? We need to start making happy memories and going out and experiencing life as a family with Fletcher because that reality of if we don't get him a donor, then he won't survive with Scott Aldridge. That sounds like you were preparing for the reality that Fletcher you know, was a fair chance of dying. Yeah. Yeah, that had, we'd reached that point where we were like, Maybe we won't have him forever. And so it was really hard to take. We just went, wouldn't, it would be terrible if we lost him and then we didn't have anything really wonderful to look back on and, and feel that we gave him a good life. If it was gonna be short, it needed to be a good one. After nearly two years of failed IVF attempts that cost Olivia and Andrew more than $100,000. Dr Weston finally created the perfect embryo and importantly, the perfect match for Fletcher. Time was definitely of the essence and they did not put the foot off the accelerator there the entire time. They were, their entire focus was achieving this objective. And I believe that they very much will love and cherish their sixth child as well. I don't believe that they had that child simply to be a donor. It was this big sense of relief, like we did it, we finally did it. And I remember I looked at Fletcher and I ran over and hugged him and I was like, we did it, we did it for you, we did it for you. Um, it was a really amazing moment. You thrilled for them? Oh, of course, how could you not be? There are very few couples as deserving as these two and very few, uh, very few causes that are as noble. We did it. This, we're going to have another baby. Yeah, baby, we're going to have another baby in our family. Is that great? For siblings Ayla, Tate, Cooper, Jackson and, of course, little Fletcher, news of a sixth sibling is all about the fancy additions that'll come with it. Now we're going to have to get a new car to get together. <laughs> to fit everybody in, I know, is that so exciting? Yay! New wheels aside, there's no guarantee of a bump-free ride. I'm sure you've been made familiar with the book, the movie, uh, My Sister's Keeper. 
What can I do for you? I want to see my parents for the rights to my own body. I've seen it, yes. My sister has leukemia. They're trying to force me to give her my body parts. You're suing us? It's not like we have a choice in this. But that's the thing I do. I do have a choice. In the movie, that, that child that comes from the IVF mm -hmm. ends up resenting the parents. Mm -hmm. Do you have any fears that that could happen here? Every day for the rest of her life, she's going to look at us like we forced her, like we used her. It should be right. I have thought about um, down the track when the child is older and it does hear about why it was conceived. It's not a bad thing. I feel like, you know, we can positively say to the child that, yes, we did have you for for some of your bone marrow, but, you know, um, it's a good thing because we knew you were going to be OK. I, is it 100% that the baby will save Fletcher? Well, it's 100% guaranteed it's a match. Mm. Transplant comes with its own risks. It seems like every time you have some sort of success in, in this whole process that the reality of a, a new risk sets in. Yeah, it's been like that the whole way. Yeah. Two steps forward, one step backwards. And we experience some success and then it's like, okay, just cue down on the celebrating because the next part is about to come. Hello. Hi. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And come it did. Uh, I guessed on Pink good. Flowers. Yeah. Here I got it right. Good job. Good choice. Good <laughs> yes, choice. Right. Just last week, little baby Liliana was born healthy happy and straight into the arms of her adoring parents. If this is love, love is easy. How much does it weigh on your mind on, on a day like today, the fact that she's saving another life as well as coming in as the sixth child? Yeah, I think that's why it was so much more emotional. And when I started to think about Fletcher when she was lying right here, I just was thinking, oh, thank God we're going to have Fletcher forever now. Liliana has to be 10 kilos before the bone marrow transplant can take place next year. So while the waiting game continues, distractions don't come much sweeter than this. Oh. And who knows what the future may now hold. I actually still have a couple of embryos stored they may end up having a seventh, who knows, they may come back, we'll see what happens in the future, how they cope with the six. There could be more on the cards. You never know, it's, uh, it's up to them. Any talk of a seventh child? <laughs> I don't think so. No thanks. <laughs> no. We'll be happy with this. <laughs> yeah, I think we're done. <laughs> I'm tired. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.